Hi, my name is Jessica and this is The Dollhouse. In today's video, I'm doing an, a doll unboxing and a detailed doll review of Harmonique and Kishiko of the Mermaids Mermaids Winter Waves collection. I would also like to compare the dolls to their Series 1 counterparts. So I have Harmonique and Kishiko here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned and we'll see which dolls truly stand up to the competition. So before I unbox the dolls, I do want to show you their packaging. So here's Kishiko in her box. And a new addition or a new quality to the boxes are that the tails are enclosed. And this is different from Series 1. I do like that, that this doll package is different and that the product is safe. There's going to be fewer scratches and issues that occur through shipping with these dolls with the whole product being enclosed in the box. So here is Kishiko here. And she comes with her jacket and some additional little knickknacks here. And here's the back of the box. There are all of the Winter Waves collection. And it says Mermaids, Mermaids. It has Kishiko, her tail. And the back of the box says, Across the shimmering seas where the sand turns to glitter, the Winter Waves crash to reveal new friends with a fabulous sparkle. And let me show you her barcode in case you do doll hunts and they're, you're having difficulty finding them in your area. Please take a screenshot of this barcode because it may help you in your doll hunt. And here is Harmonique. Her boxes, I believe all the dolls have this enclosed box. Here's her jacket and her additional little knickknacks here. And here's the back of the box. Mine has a sticker on it. Her box says the same thing as Kishiko's, and I'll show you her barcode so that may assist you in your hunt. I found these dolls for uh, around $39.99, and they're available at Walmart, Target, and Amazon.com. So if you're interested in these dolls, go ahead and find them there. I had a change of heart. I think I should unbox the dolls with you because this doc, this box is different from the original wave. And I just, I'm curious to see it, the difference. So, so far all I had done was cut two pieces of tape that were here and this flap opens up. And there's some more tape. I'm gonna cut it from the cardboard from the box. Okay, a little resistance, but it did come right out. There's a stand here that was packed in this corner back here. I thought this little plastic crystal-esque part was like another attachment that, or another detail that could be displayed with the dolls. And I guess it could be, but it's feeling like just that cheap, like the same plastic that this is. It's like that same display plastic. But I guess if you wanted to keep that, you could keep it neatly somewhere. So here is Kishiko. And she also comes with her doll stand. Her doll stand here. And it has three waist attachments. One, two, and three. And they're all in three different sizes. A small, a medium, and a large. Kishiko comes with this cute, fuzzy pink jacket. And she also comes with her accessories. And with this plastic, it is not something to save. I mean, it, I'm going to save this. But it is just like this type of plastic here. But here are her accessories that she comes with. She comes with a shell phone, this cute uniform cup here, some fingernail polish, lip gloss, lipstick, and eyeshadow. And all of the colors of these pieces are the same as her doll. Here's her lipstick and like the caps come off and I think it's cute, like it's cute. So here's her lipstick and her fingernail polish. I think that's fun. I think, I do think that's fun. Usually I'm like the little hair gels and glitters and things that they come on. I'm like, okay, I'll just put that aside. But these are cute. But for the phone, there's uh, here's the phone, and there's nothing special about this. There's no attachment to 
connect it to her to hold it so I really don't know what to do with it and the cup doesn't really fit on her head hand well but it's cute <laughs> it's super cute but let's put it on her hand It doesn't fit like her four fingers doesn't fit it fits like that but she's holding it so I guess a win is a win so she has her makeup she is wearing a pink eyeshadow with like a silver glittery eyeshadow above that she has her dark brows and she has a pink layer of eyeshadow on the lower lash her eyes are a beautiful light blue and her lips are a hot pink like her lipstick. Her earrings are silver bows and they have like little dangling stars. While I'm showing you her face, I might as well tell you about the earrings. And her hair is a different texture than the original doll. The original Kishiko had a more coarse texture and it was a little bit more full. This doll does not... Kishiko's hair is super long. Let me show you, step back so you can see how long her hair is. And there is this tinsel layer rooted along the lower layer of her hair, of her rooting, which I do plan on removing. And I've never removed or like restyled their hair. I'm usually like really cool with how they come. But this stuff is a tangled mess and I haven't even done anything with her. So good luck kids with that. Like I didn't know that I wasn't a fan of tinsel until this doll. But... <laughs> Her hair is uh, multiple, like so many different shades, and it's not like they rooted like pink, blue, yellow. Or it's like the strands transition into these different colors the farther you go down, which I think is really, really neat and is difficult to catch on camera. But uh, if you could tell, her hair is kind of blonde here, and then you see that blue come in the further you go down the strand. So it like transitions, and I think that's really really pretty her hair it has uh four braids like i don't know if it's four braids one two three three or four ish braids banded down and it's leading into this top pony that has the hair wrapped around it and this top pony is divided into two loopy loopy dooby doobs and she has uh two more loopy dooby doobs in the back of her hair here and i might take those out uh, I'll probably leave these in. But I don't think the back ones are necessary. And I'm definitely going to pull out that tinsel. <laughs> For her accessories, she has the earrings that I showed you. Uh, did I say anything about her eyes? But her eyes are that soft blue. She has the rooted eyelashes. I don't know if I said that or not. But she has this cute necklace. It's a pink chained necklace. And it has this additional little star, silver star attachment. And this fuzzy little purple heart that I think is like super adorable. Her top is a combination of two different pieces. It's this um, reflective soft blue piece and another metallic crop top here. And I'll take that apart so you can see that as well and see how it attaches. And unlike um, the Series 1 dolls, their, mold their details are it's molded down. Some of the dolls in Series 1 had like actual attachments around their waist like sh uh, like Harmonique's little bag here and this doll does not and that doesn't really bother me because this is supposed to be like a play line for people to get for kids to get wet and things like that so but I think it's cute that she has like it's white and it transitions to like a pink silver shade and it has white pearls going around it with little clips and stuff for her belt this transparent piece here is her snow globe and her tail is really loose like she is not going to stand so I think unless she's nope look how far back that leans so I think they kind of got rid of the standing thing when they get it uh, when they provided the stands which I'm totally okay with because the standing alone tail was not <laughs> ideal I was not a fan of that so here's her snow globe tail and her glitter is like in star shapes, unicorn shapes, and 
yeah, it's just like little pointed stars and unicorns and things. So let's see. And I do, I do think that this is cute and that this is fun and I might give it a good shake every blue moon. Like even once they're on my shelf and I'm no longer like in their face anymore, I might just come around and say, hey. I do think that's cute. For Kishiko, her hands are different from the Series 1 dolls. They're just like, like they're still um, movable, but they're not as beautiful as the original mermaid hands. And as petty as I am, that is something that I'm going to miss. And it looks like these hands may have been able to hold the cups and things better or the shell foam. These dolls do not have those Model S beautiful mermaid hands. Part of your words. They don't have those. They have these. So we're going to go over their articulation and things. But first I want to show you their outfit pieces. This is attached with Velcro and it's hooded. And it is no Velcro at the top of the hood. It looks like it may be large enough to fit over her head actually. So that's how you take it off. Detach the Velcro in the back and then mess her hair up and stretch it over her head. Fine. The life of an adult collector. These are for children, Jessica. Stop getting sensitive. My kids are not nowhere near as particular as I am. I'm like, no, I'm gonna mess up her hair if I do that. I'm gonna cut it off. <laughs> I'm gonna just cut the hood in half. So here is the under piece. Like here's that crop top. It has like ribbon uh, straps. And I think one of my ribbons are like caught in her arm. Yeah, it's definitely caught in there. And it attaches to the back with Velcro. Hi. And she, does she have like that molded crop top? She does. Now I have to get this top off. I want to see. Okay, I got it off. Her molded on top is actually pretty cute. So here it is. It's a blue color and it has like some little open spaces. And then the back, it's like a chain, like printed along her back. And I think that's cute. So here is this piece and the straps did stay intact as I pulled that out of her shoulder. Here's her hooded crop top and it has two drawstrings that are kind of functional. And this looks like it's designed to fit over her head and attaches with Velcro in the back. And it has these puffy sleeves, but there's no additional like decals or designs to these two little pieces. And here's Kishiko in her pretty little pink and blue fuzzy jacket. It does not attach, but it does attach at the neck. But I'm not gonna mess with that because it looks kind of snug to attach and those things are already kind of a hassle for me and there's no designs or anything on the back of this jacket comparing this Kishiko to my original Kishiko like I said earlier the hair texture is different um, but that doesn't really bother me some people were bothered by the the coarseness or the thickness of this texture but the tinsel in this one bothers me but um, the makeup I prefer series one makeup over series two but there's something different that I can't really pick out about the faces like these dolls don't quite look like they're the same person like they do but they're they don't like the face on this one looks a little wider or something but uh they do still have like a decent amount of fashion they kind of equal up the bags are still pretty cheap <laughs> like here's the new Kishiko's bag and here is the previous. The tails still do not bend. And she has the, the snow globe tail. She does not. They both change colors. But this tail no longer stands. But it comes with a stand. But this, this doll tail did function the best for me as a doll stand for her. The hands on this series are kind of basic and flat but she does have the blue fingernail polish in comparison to series one Kishiko who has the dainty mermaid hands. 
but her nails are not painted but i just loved the hands in the first series so here's harmonique out of her box and i'll do a review over her i'll completely go over all of her details uh, she comes with the doll stand as well with the additional waist clips she comes with this cute silver jacket with a rainbow like interior lining and she has her additional accessories here too but for some reason i'm not sure why i feel like harmony has a ton more than uh kishiko did harmony comes with the lip gloss and the lipstick she comes with eyeshadow a shell phone i believe a music speaker her cup fingernail polish and an additional pair of earrings i'm gonna take this off to remove the glare Here is Harm uh, Harmonique's shell phone. Come on. It says time to shine. Sorry. I was trying to capture it. And it does open. It doesn't have any way to attach to her hand. So you're going to have to like lay it flat on her hand. And I'm not sure if this is a phone or a music player. Because this is the inside. It has a picture of the Mermaids Mermaids in her little iPad screen. Or her little music is playing there. But she's a singer. So I guess she's just playing music from her phone. But she also comes with a music player here. And this does attach to her hand. So I'm not sure why they didn't do the same for the phone. That attaches. She's wearing headphones, but she does come with an adorable set of shell earrings that have two dangling chains. Her cup does not have any additional de designs or anything special. It is just a blue cup. And I'm going to see. this. She holds her cup a lot better than Kishiko does. Harmony comes with these headphones that have these additional little earpieces or ear jewels or gems attached. And I guess if you want, you can try to detach those, but they seem to be glued onto the inside into these little holes here and i don't want to break them yeah i think they're glued in it seems like they could be an additional set of earrings if you found a way to safely remove them and you could probably interchange them with the shell earrings why did they glue those in there yeah they're definitely glued in and here's her bag she has a heart-shaped book bag which is really adorable i do like this better than kishiko's bag it looks a little bit more it just gives more to me and it has the mermaids mermaids m and you can stick her little hand in there and she has this little handle so i removed harmony's headphones because they kept falling off and i want to show you her details without getting distracted because i get very easily distracted but here's her face her makeup is top tier. She has a couple different shades of uh, purple eyeshadow with some lines of silver and she has glitter in her lower lashes. She has the deep blue ocean eyes and she has uh, rooted eyelashes. She has amazing healthy eyebrows and she has a pink lip with a, uh, a high, high gloss on them. Really pretty gloss. What color is that like mauve? or something her hair has like four bantu knots on the top and she has two draping danglies in the front which i think is true to her original style from series one and she has these silver rhinestone chains wrapped around each knot and it dangles down her long wavy hair one thing about this collection it does not have a lot of product in it at all her little bangs here do but that's necessary i think to maintain these two pieces of hair neatly in the front and but back here i'm not feeling anything and her hair is so long and it is purple and pink and i think that's also another thing that makes her true to her series one release she looks like her herself to me 
uh, Kish, uh, Harmony Tans are simple, just like Kishiko's. And she's not wearing earrings because I just showed you. So we can uh, put her earrings in. So here she is with her earrings. And they are super cute. They take up a lot of her face, but I do like it. She's wearing her double, like she's wearing this chain here and it has pink and silver and it's like the chain here is pink and there's a silver chain here with a little silver heart charm. She's wearing two crop tops. One is a turtleneck style with the bells with a wide sleeve and this is a tighter more fitting top and I believe they both attach with Velcro but there's like an adjustment adjustable ribbon here at the back for this piece. Why couldn't they just have done that with Velcro? It would have been so much easier, but whatever. Her fin is a transparent snow globe, like in the animation, and she has a molded, more like a jersey style athletic uh, attachment around her waist, and it has these two little pull strings that are embedded into the plastic. They are pink and white, and her tail is a blue, and it transitions out to this clear, so you can see the snow globe. And her fin, I do not understand, but it's different, but it's, it's different. It's edgy, but it's my least favorite because that's not a mermaid fin. I don't know how a mermaid could swim like this. It looks like she was injured and that's something that she's got to explain, but clearly she wasn't and that's just the design. But compared to uh, Kishiko's tail of this line, this tail is actually functional, which is surprising. Uh, towards the front it kind of has this bounce back so it doesn't bend towards the front but it does bend like to the back to where she could stand if you adjusted her but I'm just gonna use the stand I'm not gonna mess with it here is her top without that additional uh, layer and I do like this it's like that it's giving me less is more and it's more fitting with her design on her tail I like that and it does attach with velcro for her snow globe fin, I didn't flip it for you, but it looks like there's just hearts in there and glitter. That's so satisfying. I do like the um, snow globe tails. I do wish the tails would bend, but we're not there yet. So here's Harmonique's molded on top or her uh, imprinted design for her top. And in the back, it straps around her. And I do think that's unique. Her skin is uh, has a gloss and like a shimmer to it, unlike Kishiko's skin. But it's giving me like main character vibes, the detail that they put in Harmonique. And her face is just giving, like I'm living when I see her. She's really pretty. While I have her like this, I can show you their articulation. Their heads move left and right very easily. Uh, no up and down yet but she does tilt from to left and right. She has the tilt, but no up and down and she can turn. Her arms are fully movable. Her hands are removable. She has the joint in her waist, I'm sorry, in her torso to where she can move and give you mermaid vibes. And her waist moves as well. We can uh, do some of that action. The tail does have some movement and it does kind of bend forward but I'm still curious to see how they fit in the car and I will show you that as well when I do their color reveal. I'm not going to do a full review of the doll car but I will give you a little bit of some of the points and a little bit of my opinion on that because I definitely have one. So here is Harmonique in her metallic silver jacket and it does it is hooded and it's lined with this like sherbet color interior which I think is lovely. And it has these two drawstrings to her hood here. And her jacket attaches. It has two little buttons in the front to close her jacket. Let me try to close it. So I had to close her jacket. It has those two little attachments in the front. And it has drawstrings here and at the bottom. And I personally like her jacket more than Harmony. Um, I like Harmony's jacket more than Kishiko's. It's got a little bit more going on and it has better function. But none of these jackets have like additional designs or pockets like uh, Rainbow High does. So comparing Series 1 Harmonique to current Harmonique, these dolls look like the same character to me. I do think that's nice. 
but I back to the hands that bother me. Series 1 Harmony has those molded jewelry, like the molded rings attached, and I thought that was really cute. And she also had like molded bracelets and things, and that's one thing that I haven't found in this series yet. And here is the current Series Harmony cans. But these dolls both, I do favoritize these dolls from this collection. I favorite, I did like her a lot in Series 1, and I do like this Harmonique of this series, of the Winter Wave series. For the color change portion of this video, I did purchase the uh, car, the um, Mermaid's Mermaid's car that changes colors and everything because I was, it was advertised that they um, could transform their tails in the vehicle. But when you remove this lid, and I didn't intend to do a doll review on this, I just wanted to use this to have a neat station to change colors, to change the colors and just display that or show that to you but when you open up the lid to do that there are two holes that are in the car so how am I supposed to fill this with water and use the color changing aspect of this vehicle and it is also advertised on the box Ooh. it's advertised here it's on a flat surface and they're pouring water over her tail to change the, the, the tail's color. But it says even in the instructions to do this over a sink or, or in a pool because the holes are there. So how does this serve as a color changing station for me? So I won't be able to use this for that purpose. So I am I do plan on returning this. I don't care that it changes color or that, you know. I do I did think that it was kind of cute. Like it um it opens the trunk opens in the back. I put the glitter in there because I don't plan on using that. And you pour the glitter in here, the glitter in the water. And I just see that being a huge mess. Because the water is not gonna stay in there permanently. And if you were to lift the hood, the water would come out here so yeah I, I probably will return this but we can at least see if they sit in the car let's see how that works so I'm gonna adjust my camera Here's the car. Here's where the color, the water, or the color change station would have been. And it has seat belts that come out. And here is our Harmonique. And she is strapped in there in her seat belt and her tail is relaxed in there. And it says it can fit too. So let's put them in there. They are on their way to Winterra. And she is strapped in there as well. So is this ideal? No, they're just kind of laying in there. Harmony's not really sitting. I'm sorry, Kishiko's not really sitting. Really, neither one of them are. They're just kind of reclining in there. I mean, I guess it's functional for a kid, but I'm not really impressed. And then this would close over them. They look like they had into some trouble. My original idea with the cars didn't quite work out as planned. So we're gonna go back to the basics with our bowl and cold water and do our color reveal. So here are their tails now. And I have my cup of ice cold, ice water, ice cold, ice water, and an ice cold cup. <laughs> so let's pour that water over. So this says to let them sit for a while, but the color reveal is not as dramatic 
as it was for the first series. So here's the first, it's just like the very tip of her tail turns pink. There's the entire tail emerged, submerged in the water and only the tip turns pink. Kishiko, it looks as though most of her tail does change. No, it doesn't. But that's her color change. It, to me, is not as dramatic as the very first series, if that's something that really impressed you before. Yeah, that's it. So at this point in the video, I'm going to give you my pros and cons of the collection and do my overall review. Like, are these dolls good? Are they bad? Are they an upgrade from series one? And let's get down to that. So overall, here are my pros and cons of the Winter Wave series. I think the stands are great. I think these additional pieces are cute. I think these will be fun for children. And I have fun with them as well. I do think that it's cute that the... Um, Little pieces open up, like the fingernail polish and things like that. That's cute to me, and it's fun. And that's something I might mess with again later, just for giggles or something. And I do like the their hair quality. I just wish that they didn't have tinsel. I do love the length. And I wish that they came with hair brushes. But I do like that they corrected their packaging for this line and they don't have the open tail area that they had with the Series 1 dolls. And I think that would give uh, buyers a lot more confidence when purchasing these dolls, especially if they have to purchase them online. I do think that MGA Entertainment listens to its collectors and I'm happy that they included stands and are kind of doing away with the standalone tails. I didn't think that that was functional for the previous line. And even if some of the dolls can stand on their own, it's not a must. And I'm happy that the dolls now have stand and, and the additional uh, waist pieces so that they can uh, fit onto the stands. And the stands are really tall so the, so the doll's fins can rest on the base of the stand or she could just kind of float. And that, that improves uh, picture options and visual options and posability for the dolls. I do like the snowflake or the snow globe gimmick. I do think it's cute and I think it's fun. And with winter approaching and with the holidays coming up soon, this will be fun for girls in the winter if they collect them or have them for Christmas or even now once it starts getting chilly out. Um, so yeah, so let's do the cons. I've always got cons. I think the details in some of the clothing and the accessories are kind of cheap. Uh, the dolls are retailing for $39.99 for this collection, and the original line retailed for $32.99. Yes, I'm looking at notes, because I wanted to make sure I covered everything. The, the original line retailed for $32.99. At first, I didn't realize it, but I do feel that the original line was a little bit overpriced. So even with these dolls being $32.99 for Series 1, and with $39.99 uh, being the price of the current dolls, I don't think that that is quite hitting the nail on the head. I do think these dolls could be a little bit cheaper. They don't come with an additional outfit, they, and they don't have the quality in the outfit or clothing that Rainbow High or even LOLOMG dolls have in their collections. The tails don't have, they can't, you have play options limited because there's no movability in the tail. And even like these jackets don't have the detail that the other lines that MGA Entertainment puts out for around these same prices. These dolls come with a jacket and uh, two little crop top pieces. There's no pants or anything or dresses involved with these dolls. And, but we did receive this, which is was optional really this was not necessarily a need but it is cute i think the end they came with their jackets here i think the win for this line was the stand but was the stand worth like seven or eight extra bucks what i don't like about the line is that they gave us so many of the accessories and the phones and things like that but with the hands they didn't give us a option for the dolls to hold it which I think would affect doll photography and things like that. So you, if you want her to hold her phone, you have to literally like balance her hand, keep it straight. And she's following us, somebody else. 
and like place it in there like that works if you want to do it that way but she's not going to be able to talk on this or anything or be sassy another thing that i felt was different from this series from series one the color change was not very dramatic for me and it was only a uh very small portion of the tail that changed colors for kishiko it was for kishiko it was like a uh, very quick reveal for her color change and it was not it was just her cha change was like a soft blue like on the lower portion of the tail but it wasn't dramatic as series one and it wasn't the whole tail so i'm not sure if they're going to get rid of that gimmick in the future and it's not really something that i need but for this line coming out and that being something that they introduced with series one and if they're going to continue that I expect it to get better if that's what they're going to be known for and not worse or less. And with um, Harmonique's tail, she has this funny little fin here and it literally, literally just turned pink right here. Like we have all of this here that could have changed colors and it was just this little tippy tip piece that changed colors. It wasn't a really dramatic reveal. There's things that I miss in Series 1 that Series 2 didn't offer, and there's things in Series 2 that Series 1 didn't offer. So overall, I do think that the series, the Winter Waves collection is an upgrade from Series 1. I think the dolls are beautiful, and I think that they're fun, and I will continue to uh, collect these dolls for the time being. For my next doll review, I do plan to unbox the rest of the Winter Waves collection, so that will be Mira, Christabella, and Gwen. So stay tuned for that video. Please let me know how you feel about this collection. Tell me if I was wrong for how I feel or what you think of the Winter Waves collection. If you are interested in Series 1, they are having a sale online, I believe on Amazon.com. A, a lot of these dolls can be found for the price of like 20, 20 bucks, maybe a little bit more, give or take, or a little bit less. So if you're interested in Series 1, go ahead and check that out. I think that's a, a lot more reasonable of a price than the $32.99 that they originally retailed at. So please let me know what you think of this review. Is there anything that I missed or anything else that you would like to know? Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video or to this channel. Thank you. My name is Jessica and this is The Dollhouse. I'll see you next time.